Invest in the experts that are critical in your areas of business in areas that you are weak in. So if you got an area in your business that's critical, that you know you need help, invest in that area, invest in that expert. And I use that word critical for a reason, right? Because when you're not an expert at something and you bring in an expert, they can take you to that next level faster. Today, we have an interesting topic and I titled this topic, Why Do You Need an Accountant? And it's interesting because I picked this title because most of us don't leverage the resources of others adequately. We don't leverage the talents of others in a way that allows us to move ahead rapidly, right? A lot of entrepreneurs just don't do that. And I get it. I absolutely get it. You know, many of us entrepreneurs, you know, we started our business, right? We got our start by figuring it out, right? We just had to figure it out. You know, and a lot of times we had to figure it out on our own. We didn't have mentors telling us how to do things because they had done it before. We didn't have any handbook of how to do this, right? We had to do it our own. We learned from the school of hard knocks, right? We had to figure it out. And many of us, when we started our businesses, right, we started our businesses on a shoestring budget, like nothing. When we started our business, we had to literally invest, reinvest in our own business. Some of us started our businesses as a side hustle, right? And there weren't any gifts from our parents or friends or even our spouses, right? None of us got that handout when we started our business. And I'll tell you, many of us, if you went to the bank when you first started your business to get a loan, the banks didn't even believe in your business, right? They absolutely denied you to come back after a couple of years after we can see that you can make it, that you got some traction. And so as entrepreneurs, a lot of us became jacks of all trades, right? We were do-it-yourselfers, right? We did every part of our business, right? And not only did we master our own craft, but we had to learn how to market it, right? Because people didn't just come to you because you put a sign out, right? We had to master how do we sell this to this craft that we've developed. We had to learn how do we scale the growth of a business? How do we keep adding employees while at the same time staying profitable? And we had to make our own first hire. And a lot of times that first hire was the biggest mistake, right? We had to learn it on our own. We had to learn how to build our website. You know, some of us were like trying to figure out coding way back in the day when websites first came out. You know, we designed our first business card. I remember I had to run a FedEx Kinko and I was like, how do I line these little square boxes up again? And, you know, I laugh now because who uses business cards anyway? I, I don't think I've used my business cards since the end of 2019. And if you have a brick and mortar business, right, not only did you have to master your craft, learn how to sell it, learn how to fulfill it, right, just yourself, we often had to clean the facility too after the day was done, right? We had to clean those bathrooms, right? And literally, we were jacks of all trade. But interestingly enough, at some point as an entrepreneur, when you're a jack of all trades, when you're doing it all yourself, what happens is you start to hinder the business from growing, right? The business can't grow beyond the amount of time that you have in a day, right? When you're doing that and you're being that jack of all trades. And what happens is it hinders our businesses from growing because the truth is, reality is we only have 24 hours in a day, right? Nobody has an hour more in a day. Maybe like, you know, no, we don't even have 24 hours in a day. I heard the days are getting shorter now. I heard they're like 22 hours in reality. Um, nobody has, you know, more than seven days a week. Nobody has more than 365 days in a year, except during the leap year, right? We all have the same amount of time and nobody has really more time than either or, right? Everyone has the same amount of time. And so why do some people just manage to do more? Why do some people just seem to do more, even though they have the same amount of time as everybody else? And I'll tell you this because at some point for you to grow beyond yourself, to grow beyond your time, right? you're going to have to learn to leverage the talents of others, okay? You're going to have to leverage the talent of others and add more time by adding more people, right? Is what you're going to have to do. And this is especially true if you are growing a business beyond $250,000 in revenue. And especially if you're growing your business to a seven-figure or beyond business, you're going to have to be able to leverage the talent of others in order to increase more time, right? And so today, what I want to do is I want to talk about some of the key partners that you will want to have in order to leverage their talent in order for you to grow faster while at the same time staying in compliance, right? Because no one wants to grow an amazing business that they're proud of just to have the IRS knocking on their door one day and saying, hey, you got taxes of like $300,000 at UO. And you're like, I didn't even know I was subject to that tax. And you know, just because you're ignorant doesn't mean that you don't have to pay the tax, right? And so you want to be in compliance all along the way. So one of the first thing that you want to do, right, to make sure you're building a business that you're proud of, that you can sleep at night, that it's a secure business, 
one of the first partners that you want to have on your team is a legal counsel, right? And not just legal counsel. What I'm talking about is an attorney, right? You want to have a business attorney, not a family law attorney, right? Not a probate attorney. You want a business attorney, someone that deals with business issues and you don't want to be their first rodeo, right? You want a very experienced attorney on your side. And it's interesting because too many business out there, you know, they try to secure legal counsel only when they're in trouble, right? And I'll tell you this, when you're trying to get legal counsel and you're in trouble, it's probably too late, okay? It's too late and it's going to be very, very expensive. But having that legal counsel in place when you first start, right, who's part of your team, right, someone that you can bounce ideas off, right, someone that knows your business and and help, you know, that's going to keep you from getting in a whole lot of trouble is what it's going to do. And I highly recommend, you know, that you procure that legal counsel when you first start out and particularly in the areas of, you know, drafting that employee handbook, right? You want to make sure that you're covering every single thing that is put in there, that it's saying right what you intended for it to say. Your employee contracts too, you know, like what happens if you don't turn in equipment, right? At the end of your time with that business, you know, you want that employee contract to be drafted so that at the end of the day, you know, they're made whole and you're made whole. You want to make sure your vendor contracts are also reviewed by your attorney because, you know, are they an employee? Are they a 1099 contractor? You know, what are their responsibilities for taxes? What are your responsibilities? What are their deliverables? What are their times? What do they need to provide in order to do the job? You want that spilled out in your contracts. And also for your customer contracts, you know, as you're getting those customer contracts, you want to have that drafted by your legal team because too many times things go sour, right? And you're like, you know, the only thing that you can rely on is that legal contract because at some point someone's going to have an understanding. Someone's going to think it's common sense, right? That you should have done this, but having it drafted in words, right? It really sets the pace for how that relationship is going to go and what those expectations are. And you want to want to have an attorney to help you do that. And also your policies, your policies, you're going to want to make sure that your attorney looks at those because you want to make sure you're promising things that you can deliver, right? And not only do you want your attorney involved in just the initial setup of those documents, right? You want to have your attorney continually involved in reviewing those documents and make sure that they're updated on an ongoing basis. And you want to do this because laws change. They change every single day. They change every month, right? The laws are constantly changing and you want to make sure your policies are updated to reflect that because laws do change regularly and situations change. You know, I think about our business during COVID, you know, we had to actually go virtual for a while, right? We wanted to socially distance. And so we said, okay, people are going to work from home. And, you know, we didn't have a virtual policy, right? People had never worked virtually in many cases. And so we were required to adapt our policies to meet that virtual environment, right? And again, having that good experience attorney, what that's going to do is that's going to allow you to anticipate your needs before you even need to, right? That's going to help you go, you know, this is what's coming up in the pipeline. This is what I've seen other business owners face. And so I want to make sure your policy addresses those things. So securing a good, solid, experienced attorney is something I would recommend that every business do, no matter what level in your business. And if you're starting out, get that attorney on board to review those documents before you ever really you know, need them and get in trouble, right? Because the time to secure that attorney is before you get in trouble, because after you get an attorney, it's too late for that, okay? The next thing that I would recommend is procuring a good, experienced accountant and bookkeeper, Okay. And a lot of accountants, they'll also do bookkeeping. So you'll want to ask, hey, can you do both of them? Because it's good that they have that relationship back and forth. And they're really going to understand your books if you have that accounting service also done in your accounting firm. Like our firm does both accounting as well as tax. And what an experienced accountant is going to do is it's going to allow you to focus on the things that you do best while not really having to worry about losing sleep because of a lack of compliance, okay? Okay. And what's going to happen is, you know, when you have a good accountant, you don't have to worry about waking up one morning and tax collectors literally knocking on your door, right? And that good accountant is going to allow you to sleep at night. And it's interesting because tax laws change regularly, right? And, you know, during the COVID time, they were changing like every single week, right? And in this environment, tax policies, they can change, you know, month to month, even now. And as a CPA, you know, we were the first ones to reach out to our clients before they even knew PPP loan was coming. You know, we told them to look out for PPP loans. We were sending them emails every day, updating them, telling them really to get first in line. A lot of our clients were first in line to get those PPP monies because they had their accountant. They had us literally telling them this is who's approving them. The big banks are really slow. This is where we're seeing it the fastest, right? 
And when the ERC credit came out, the employee retention credit came out, we were the first ones to do the ERC calculations for our clients. And they didn't even know we were doing it because we were looking to see how much refund would they get and was this worth them going after? And they were so happy to get those five to six figure refunds. Okay. Very, very happy with it. And there are many, many other tax credits that are out there as a business owner. You guys are busy doing what you do and you just can't be aware of it, right? You don't have time to sit up at night reading tax regs and new pronouncements, right? You don't have time to read that. And that's why you need to have on your team an expert CPA who not only just cares, but is really on your side to really help you assist you in making sure that you are in line for those tax credits that are coming out. And as a business owner, you need to also continuously understand you know, what's working and what's not working, right? And you need to know what's constantly working versus what's not working because you need to be able to course correct, right? And fix things before it's too far down, right? You don't want money just draining, right? You want to be able to catch when things are broken and really be able to go back and fix it really quick, right? And so this means that you have to have your financial statements up to date, right? You can't just be doing it at the end of the year for taxes. You need to know every single day, you know, how are your financial statements doing so that you can course correct what's working, what's not working, right? And some of you guys actually need to get in job costing, right? And I'm sorry, guys, if anybody out there is relying on QuickBook feeds, you know, those automated fees and the QuickBooks on their bank account, this is not going to work for you. You know, those fees reality wise, they get messed up pretty bad. And you're going to need someone to make sure those feeds are being programmed to go to the right place and someone that can really fix those messes that those feeds cause. And a solid bookkeeper, what that's going to do, that's going to allow you to do this. And not just having financial statements are important, right? But also you got to know how to read them. You got to know how to understand them, right? And so it's important to have an accountant that has the time, right? To meet with you, you know, an accountant who's going to prioritize their time to help make room for you, space for you, so that you can start to understand what your numbers are and start to really understand them and dissect them like a CEO should be. Because your numbers are telling a story. Your numbers are screaming at you, right? And you just have to be able to determine, you know, what do those trends mean so that you can actually get into those numbers and see what those numbers mean for you. And and for you guys that are like, just seeing your accountant once a year at tax time, who's like literally coming in and like just getting a tax return done. I'm going to be honest, this is going to be a heartbreaker here, but you don't really have a relationship with your accountant if you're only seeing them once a year. You have to invest in a CPA who's willing to spend time with you to help you optimize the operations of your business, okay? You want a CPA that you're not seeing once a year, but a CPA that you're seeing regularly that's helping you optimize that business. And then the last thing, the last thing is, you know, invest in the experts that are critical in your areas of business in areas that you are weak in. So if you've got an area in your business that's critical, that you know you need help, invest in that area, invest in that expert. And I use that word critical for a reason, right? Because when you're not an expert at something and you bring in an expert, they can take you to that next level faster. And I admit it, don't hire me to be your website designer, okay? Don't hire me to be your website designer. I'm not very good at it, okay? Unless you want just happy faces, I can make happy faces on a website. I'm not the best graphic designer, but I do employ people who love to do this and who are actually good at it. And because I hired them, I am seeing an ROI or return on investment for bringing them onto my team. So invest in areas where you are weekend. 